All right, so let's get caught back up here on the right aileron work. Um, I've, I've been dividing my time between this right aileron and the right fuel tank, and uh, for the moment I'm, I'm doing some more aileron work, so let me talk about what I've done. This is obviously the skin, and it has the stiffeners back riveted to it, so obviously the skin has been completely prepped, uh, edge cleaned, holes match drilled, Dimple, deburred, the standard procedures, and the, uh, the stiffeners are in it. As I said, those were, uh, what do you call it, um, wow, back riveted. And you can see that I've already gone ahead and um, finished the bend along the length of the aileron. Now, I didn't videotape or document that process, but maybe I will. I don't know if I, maybe I'll just lay the aileron in it at some point and talk about how to get the bend using the uh, your uh, custom made uh, bending jig. Mine's just made out of wood. I think most people make them out of wood. Anyway, that may be a separate video, but for now, I'm just going to concentrate on what I'm working on next, which is the spar for the aileron. And again, this has already been completely prepped. It's been uh, edge finished, uh, match drilled, dimpled, and it, it's ready to go. What I'm fitting onto that are these reinforcement plates. These are, I've got the prints just within eyesight here. This is part number A-408, these reinforcement plates. These are supplied um, in the wing kit already cut to size basically all you need to do is edge finish and uh, clean them clean up the edges when I made the left aileron when I got to this part on the left aileron I just went ahead and did all of them so these were already finished and waiting for me when I got to this aileron here so let me uh, mount this camera on a tripod and I'm going to go ahead and do the complete install or the drilling of this onto the spar. So here we go on uh, fitting these uh, reinforcement plates onto the main spar of the aileron. You'll notice when you look at the spar, the holes that are in it here, uh, you can get an idea of the Clecos you're going to need. So there are, it looks like to be one, two, three, four, number 40 Clecos, which are the silver ones, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the larger number 30 Clecos, which are the more copper colored. What you also need are these clips or these uh, Cleco type clamps. I like, I've got three of them out here. These came with the toolkit that I bought when I first started the airplane or before I started the airplane. I bought a major aircraft toolkit and these came with it. So the instructions tell you that for the alignment of the plate, you line it up even with this edge here and then you basically center it up and down on the web of the spar. So what I like to do is this. Let me make sure that's still in camera view. All right. <clears throat> I'll just take a metal ruler and I'll lay it here along the edge of the uh, spar and I'll slide the plate up against the ruler and then I will just kind of eyeball it top and bottom and what I'm going to do real quick is step off camera here grab my magnifying glasses and I'll get this lined up like that, and then I'll just eyeball it top and bottom to get it centered. It's not critical, you've got plenty of edge distance to play with. That looks pretty good right there. So now it's aligned with the edge of the spar with the ruler here, and it's centered top and bottom enough that I'm happy with it. And I'll hold it there. And I'll go ahead and Clico a clamp. Being careful not to move 
the plate on the spar. And I'll just check it real quick. That still looks flush. It still looks even with the web. It even feels even. And you can tell when you sight down these long edges here of the plate itself that it's not cocked in relation to the to the spar. Alright, so now <clears throat> I can flip this back over. I can see where all the holes are that I need to drill. So now I'm going to add a third clamp now that I can see where the holes are. And I'm going to add this clamp just to reinforce it and I'm going to go ahead and drill this first number 40 hole. Got my drill bits handy. Now if you're like me, which you may or may not be, I like to wear hearing protection at all times. I'm gonna put my hearing protection on. I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole, do it nice and easy so I don't move the plate. Move the debris out of the way, top and bottom, and put in a Clico. I'm going to run the Clicos up from the bottom as well so they don't interfere with the drill. Alright, now I've got these two nut plate holes. I'm going to leave my clamps where they are. I'm going to do this hole here opposite of the hole that I just did, just so that will help keep the plate from, from twisting or rocking around. And that is basically as easy as it gets. You just go ahead and keep drilling, keep adding Clicos. What I am going to do, I'm going to go ahead and do all of these holes. And then I'll come back and take these clamps off one at a time and do the holes that the clamps are covering up. So that's it. I'll go ahead and do this hole next, then I'll change bits and I'll do these larger holes. Then I'll come back, move this Clico, do that hole. Remove this clamp, Clico, do that hole. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And then when you're done, you'll have a plate such as this, match drilled to match the spar. Make sure you label it. So this plate is, goes on the left end of the spar, and this edge here is the top edge. So make sure that you do label them because after you unclico everything, it may be mildly difficult to discern which plate goes where. This, this end of the spar has these three nut plate holes. The other end does not, so that makes it easy. You obviously will be able to tell which plate goes where because only one has this nut plate. So that's it. That's, uh, it's a very simple method of getting the match drilled spar with the reinforcement plates. Alright, so I'm continuing to work on the right wing aileron. And you can see here that I've got it all clicoed together <clears throat> per the instructions. Um, there isn't anything really um, hard to do or, or any gotchas or anything like that. It's pretty straightforward as per the plans and the instructions. Just uh, get your parts organized and get them clicoed together. So you can see on this end of the aileron, this is obviously an end rib. This is a nose rib. Here's the counterbalance weight that runs the entire length of the aileron. And everything is clicoed. What I'm doing now is the uh, match drilling. So originally I had a Clico in every hole. 
on the whole thing just to get it put together and squared and make sure that the holes do in fact uh, line up with one another. And what I'm doing now is I have removed every other Clico and I went ahead and drilled just like on the wing skins from the wing video. And after I do that, I come back just like with the wings. Um, let me see if I can get a good shot. So I remove every other Clico and then I drill, of course, the holes. And then I come back and I mark a line at each Clico that's still in place. So this line represents the holes that I need to drill. So I'll take these Clicos and move them to the holes that I have already drilled. And then <clears throat> once I do that, just so there's no confusion, the holes that have the black line are now the holes that I need to drill. I just like to do that because in the past with like the bigger sheets of aluminum like skins, um, there's a lot of holes. Uh, there's holes that run across horizontally, there are holes that run vertically, and when you start moving Clicos around you may get a little confused as to which holes you've already drilled. So this is just my method. Um, I've already drilled all of these so that I don't have any marks on here to worry about. These have already been drilled and the non-drilled holes have already been marked with uh, the marker. And then it's the same thing down here. All of these have already been drilled so there are no lines. These Clicos will stay in place. So that's it. I'm just going through and uh, match drilling and moving Clicos around. I am now match drilling the bottom side of the aileron and there is one thing that I want to bring to your attention. When you read through the instructions they say to open up these holes here on the bottom only. On the bottom of the aileron along the length of the spar all of these holes have to be opened up to a number 30 size drill because these get pop rivets. So, I went ahead as usual and I drilled, removed every other Clico, drilled those holes, marked the holes that I didn't drill, and then I moved the Clicos. So these Clicos have already been drilled. These Clicos are now in the holes that I've already done. These with the lines are the holes that I need to drill. <clears throat> But you need to be a little bit careful because these, all of these holes are number 40. These holes here are 40. But all of the holes that run the length of the spar have to be opened up to 30. So originally this was all Clicoed with the small silver, these, the, the number 40 size Clicos. Those were all in here. And then I opened up the holes to 30, and then I had to remove those small Clicos and use the bigger copper colored Clicos into the holes that I just opened up to size 30. So these obviously have been opened up to 30 holes already. These that have been marked need to be opened up next. So again, along the perimeter is your standard size 40. Um, rivets, holes, and then along the length of the spar you have to open up to the 30. So this hole here has to get opened up to a 30. And the one at the other end as well, as with all of these. So that's that. <clears throat> 